सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुलर ऑन ग्राउंड कवरेज फ्रॉम एवरी कॉर्नर ऑफ द कंट्री एंड इट्स हाई क्वालिटी एनालिसिस ऑन डोमेस्टिक एंड इंटरनेशनल इशूज है लॉयल्टी ऑफ सपोर्टर्स लाइक यू but journalism costs money and we need subscriptions from our viewers and our readers i'd request you to please consider taking one you can find the link in the description below thousands watched as a leather whip fell again and again on the back of kale khan proclaimed a notorious smuggler by the regime of muhammad zia ul haq the hand of god was always busy in the islamic utopia the general was building floggings and even amputations under local anesthesia the regulations conceded in a concession to the modern world were introduced in a new criminal code to punish criminals fornicators and political opponents editors who asked how long military rule would last got a grim answer from the general maybe 2 years maybe 4 years maybe 10 less than 4 weeks from today on the 12th of august the term of pakistan's parliament the national assembly will end even though ministers have given conflicting accounts of exactly when parliament will be dissolved prime minister shahbaz sharif has promised to hand power over to an interim government that will conduct elections within 3 months of that date this should be good news for pakistan after all each election is supposed to take it one step further away from the despotism of the zia years but this time it's not quite so simple the critical dangers confront democratic life in pakistan if the coming elections aren't credible first engineering defections from former prime minister imran khan's party and prosecuting him in high profile graft cases have weakened him headed into the elections even then he's demonstrated substantial popular support especially among young people flagrant rigging could destabilize the polity undermining pakistan's fragile economic recovery secondly eliminating the axis of opposition from pakistan's political life could empower a resurgent jihadist movement that's operating against the army with increasing impunity Last week alone 12 soldiers were lost in attacks at Zob and Sui in the Balochistan province. Third, the threat to the army's own legitimacy that is mounting could push it to deepen repression, further destabilizing the polity. The military is determined to keep Imran out, but to keep him out might involve the demolition of the party system in Pakistan and all kinds of unpredictable consequences. Late in 1984, Zia held a referendum to legitimize his rule. Empty voting stations miraculously manifested overflowing boxes of ballots. 97.7 percent marked in the general's favor. Zia's dour clerical ally, the peer of Pagaro, Sikandar Ali Shah, attributed the miracle to farishte or angels. In many elections since then. among them the referendum held by general parvez musharraf and imran's own triumph 5 years ago farishte have proved a decisive voting bloc will they do so again the hazard and answer needs the examination of the complex ties between the military and imran's pakistan tehreek e insaf party and why that relationship broke down show sure you want to start a political party the constitutional lawyer hamid khan incredulously asked imran in the summer of 1996 early on the morning of april 25 that year former party activist tabinda khan has recorded imran had called a meeting at the home of noshirwan burki the head of the shokat khanam memorial hospital which imran had set up in his mother's memory at the meeting imran put his plans 
to a small group of his core philanthropic supporters. Not a single one a career politician. The PTI's founding group, Tabinda Khan notes, was connected to high-ranking military officials and politicians aligned with the Musharraf regime through family ties and long-standing friendships. Like the military leadership, the elite it represented attributed Pakistan's problems to the corruption and incompetence of traditional politicians. It wanted to sweep them aside and bring about meritocratic, honest rule. From 9-11 on, Imran grew in visibility. The consequence of the exile imposed on former Prime Ministers Benazir Bhutto and Nawaz Sharif by Musharraf's military regime. Imran could have capitalized on the opportunity. But his trenchant support for the Taliban and his opposition to Pakistan's military cooperation with the West led him to be arrested under the anti-terrorism laws by Musharraf in 2007. Then, in 2008, Musharraf turned to the Pakistan People's Party for legitimacy. Even if some in the PPP were uncomfortable about making a deal with a military ruler who had, after all, deposed their principal opposition in a coup, they chose to silence their conscience. The seduction of power, as always, was substantial. Politicians from the existing parties, scholar C. Christine Fair has observed, would always rather serve the army than lose their power altogether. The disquiet Imran voiced with the war on terror, though, was actually shared by a significant section of the military elite. From 2007, the journalist Daud Khatak has reported, new army chief General Parvez Ashwaq Kayani began pushing hard to secure peace deals with the Tehreek-e Taliban jihadists in Pakistan. Like other key military leaders, Kayani believed that the rupture between the jihadists and the army after 9-11 posed an existential threat to Pakistan. Musharraf, this school of thought believed, had confronted Pakistan with an unwinnable war. Following his electoral defeat in 2013 and the return of Nawaz as Prime Minister, Imran realized though that his party needed not just the backing of the elite, but so-called notables, the powerful political brokers who controlled the electoral system on the ground. The military elite facilitated Imran's outreach to the notables. Imran spearheaded multiple protests against Nawaz with the tacit barking of the Pakistan army, culminating in a judiciary-led coup against the Prime Minister and the sham election that eventually catapulted him to office. Even if the election was rigged, it's important to remember Imran had genuine appeal. The vague Islamic egalitarianism, Islamic socialism, some call it, that he propagated had deep roots. It drew on former Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's ideas, repackaged for a new youth cohort. To many young people, it seemed that Imran, who had after all demonstrated national success was possible on the cricket field, could also deliver on the promise of Pakistan where tired old dynastic leaders had failed. Like Zulfikar and other prime ministers, Imran, however, had a problem, which was that the army that had installed him in office could just as easily dethrone him. Imran began trying to populate the top leadership of the army with his own loyal allies and precipitated the crisis that ended with his dismissal last year. Even though the generals evicted Imran, though, they understood the forces he represents can't be wished away. The generals know Pakistan's political parties are important or they wouldn't be spending so much time attempting to control their leadership and direct their course. Even for powerful despots like Zia, politicians with their local fiefdoms were important conduits for exercising power on the ground. Zia legitimized his rule with a referendum since there was no mention of democratic elections in the Quran, and the referendum asked citizens a single question. If they supported the Islamic ideology of Pakistan, giving a vote for Islamic democracy is your national obligation, a banner in Bahawalpur exhorted residents. A message backed up by making opposition to the referendum a criminal offence. The military claimed over 60% of eligible citizens participated in the referendum with, as I said, 97.7% voting yes. 
estimates made by independent observers put the participation as low as 30% and opposition leaders claimed it was just 5%, scholar William Richter has written. Later, Zia had to hold a non-partisan election, that is without political parties, which led to the election of landowner and industrialist Mohammad Khan Junejo as Prime Minister. Even the pliant Junejo ended up clashing with his master on key military appointments and was dismissed in May 1988. Musharraf used pretty much the same methods or template to rule as Zia had. According to the official figures, some 97.5% of voters supported his appointment as the country's president, in addition to serving as army chief. What people cannot do can always be achieved through angels, one journalist told the writer Masood Ansari. Musharraf's hand-picked political clients, the Pakistan Muslim League Qaid e Azam faction, proved inadequate to secure his position though, and he was forced to seek reconciliation with the PPP. Even though the army could install clients to serve as its instruments, it also needed a higher moral authority to justify its control of society and politics. From early in Pakistan's national history, scholar Aisha Siddiqa has perceptively argued, the military cloaked itself in the mantle of the religious nationalism on which the country was founded. Zia's theocratic tendencies thus were no accident. The general's invocation of God's authority was needed to restore the status and prestige of an institution battered by military defeat in 1971 and challenged by multiple insurrections at home. Imran has brought that moral authority of the army over political life into question as never before, exposing the divisions not only within Pakistan society, but within the army's ranks on the country's political future. Though it is probable his fate in the coming elections will be sealed by the famous Farishte, he's unleashed his own jinns in response. A long, fateful battle looms after the last vote is cast by humans or by angels. I'm Praveen Swami and I'm National Security Editor of The Print. Thank you once again for watching Security Code.